Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the CBJMS, or what I'm gonna to refer to it as the nail gun, because it looks like one and it hits about as hard as it. Uh, and so I went into this thinking that this was gonna be kind of a fun little adventure. It has some very unique properties to it, mainly the fact that it has 51 rounds in its magazine. It's kind of a hip firing machine. And so I thought this would be kind of entertaining to use. But after playing for many, many hours trying to get gameplay for this, I quickly learned that this gun is atrocious. Like it is god awful. And so I'll kind of explain why and kind of some ways on improving it but overall this is a weapon that is very situational and while in some scenarios it can be very exciting and sometimes when you're able to take advantage of its very unique properties you're able to go on some very entertaining kill streaks but for the most part the nail gun is terrible so first off, the CBJ has a very interesting damage model. It's going to do 22 damage up close, and then it's going to drop off to 12.1 damage at long range. And so this is not a very heavy hitting gun. Essentially, it's going to take you five rounds to take someone out up close, and then if you try, for whatever reason, try to snipe someone at a distance, it's going to take you a staggering nine bolts to drop them. Like, it's going to take you an eternity. Uh, and then on top of that, it only has a rounds per minute of 700, and that is very, very low for a weapon that only does 22 damage up close and has a terrible damage model at range. Like, when you get into a firefight with someone and you have such a low damage model, usually there's there needs to be something else that will compensate for it. Like, usually you'll have a very high RPM so that as long as you get enough bullets down range, you're gonna be able to take them out quickly enough. But as things stand right now, with such a low rounds per minute and such a low damage model, this gun has an atrocious time to kill. Like any other weapon that you come across is gonna dominate you, at least in the time to kill department. And so essentially what I kind of found myself needing to do was always flank my enemy and catch them by surprise. Because the minute I got into a fair firefight where they knew I was there and we started the firefight at the same time, it didn't really matter what I did simply because the weapon just doesn't perform as well as the others and it's time to kill is so low, I usually died a very, very painful and quick death. Uh, and then on top of that, if that even wasn't enough, it also has an atrocious recoil numbers. It's got a vertical of 0.29, which admittedly isn't awful, like that's definitely manageable. But when you start to look at its horizontal, that's where things get insane. It's got a left kick of 0.45 and a right also a 0.45. And so when you aim down sight, which you usually don't need to, and we'll kind of talk about that in here in a second, your weapon is going to bounce all over the place. Like, you have no idea, you can't predict where it's going to bounce, which is a downside. And when it does recoil, it's going to go everywhere. And so it's completely unmanageable. And so when you try to take someone out at medium to long range, not only are you going to do no damage at all, but it's also going to be very challenging for you to maintain and sustain your accuracy. Uh, the upside, though, is that it does have have a phenomenal hip fire accuracy like it's got one of the best hip fire accuracy in the game and so when you get into those tight spots where you are kind of running and gunning and you're up close and personal this weapon does very well with its hip fire and you don't even need to aim down sight in those scenarios because the hip fire accuracy is that good but even that being said it doesn't make up for the fact of all of the other things that I just mentioned because even if you get into a scenario where you can take advantage of its hip fire accuracy it's not like your weapon all of a sudden does more damage or has a faster RPM. So even though you have some sort of advantage, the other guy still has an advantage over you in almost every other category. Uh, as for its reload, it's got a short of 2.4 seconds and its long is 3.3 seconds. And so while it's not awful in this category, it's definitely not its saving grace or it's not really gonna give you an advantage as well. Uh, the last thing, and I've kind of already mentioned this, is that it does have 51 rounds in its magazine. Magazine. And so if you are able to take advantage of these 51 rounds and you're able to catch people by surprise This weapon performs very very well And you guys will see throughout today's video when I am able to kind of sneak around and play the stealthy game I'm able to take advantage of the weapon and I can just go on some pretty impressive kill streaks But as I said if I do get into a fair firefight nine out of ten times I just I just fall over dead. There's just nothing I can do It doesn't matter how good I am at the game my weapon just underperforms against every other one one, at least in the at least in the categories that matter and so if I don't catch them by surprise my kill streak is ruined uh, so now that we kind of have a basic understanding of this weapon stats and hopefully you guys now understand why this is a very interesting gun 
I wanted to talk about some accessories that will complement its playstyle. And so the first accessory is really just gonna come down to using the laser sight. The laser sight is going to increase your hip fire accuracy, and because this weapon thrives off its hip fire potential, it's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, as for the barrel attachment, this is where you get a couple more options, but at least for me, it really just came down to using the suppressor. Uh, as I've been saying throughout today's video, if you do not catch your enemy by surprise, and if you're not able to flank effectively, you're gonna have a rough time. Like, when you're showing up on the minimap every single time you take out one of their allies, they're gonna know where you are and you just lost your advantage. And so, personally, I thought the suppressor suited and complemented this weapon very well. It's gonna keep you off the minimap. It doesn't have any penalty to uh, your hipfire accuracy like it did in Battlefield 3. So, overall, I thought that this was a solid pick. Uh, you can also slap on the compensator, which is going to reduce your horizontal recoil. And as I said, the aim down sight recoil on this gun is is pretty unmanageable, especially the horizontal, and so using the compensator is gonna make that a little bit more manageable. But overall, this is a gun where you shouldn't be aiming down sight all that often. Like, you wanna get up close and personal, you wanna take advantage of its hip fire accuracy, and I felt like the compensator just wasn't a solid pick. Uh, but as for actually using this weapon, I found that there are only a couple of maps that will let you perform at least decently well with it. If you want to try this on Goldmud Railways where there's a lot of long-range engagements, more power to you. If you think that you can somehow manage it, then, then go for it. Uh, you could also try this out on Operation Locker where you would assume it might do a little bit better because of that close encounter combat, but because it's so lane-oriented and you have to usually win duels against people, you're gonna struggle there as well. And so the maps that I had the most success on were stuff like Hanan Resort. You can do all right if you hang around the, the resort section of it. Uh, Flood Zone was another solid one because there are just so many different nooks and crannies that I could take advantage of and use the uh, the elevation changes to my advantage. Uh, Zavad was also solid because there are lots of different objects that I can hide behind where I could kind of close the gap and flank my enemies effectively. And so you really do need to think about the map that you're about to play on and if it's going to have the appropriate setting for the nail gun, if it's going to be a lot of long range combat or there's going to be a lot of lanes where you're going to have a lot of uh, firefights, then you should probably avoid using this weapon. But if there are some maps that will have a lot of objects that you can hide behind and kind of close the gap and play a little bit more stealthy, then that's where things get a little bit better. Uh, so overall, after using this weapon for many, many hours, after trying out different weapon attachment combinations and just trying to make this gun work, I've come to the conclusion that this is a very good weapon for someone who is looking for a challenge. If you like to kind of sneak around the map, you like to play the more stealthy role, and you like to get those awesome flanks off, but also have a weapon that has enough ammunition to take advantage of those flanks, then this is a great gun for you. Uh, but if you are looking for an engineer weapon that has at least some sort of firepower that will allow you to duel and go get into firefights with other people and win those firefights, I would kind of stray away from this. This is not an easy weapon to use. It has a lot of things uh, kind of holding it back. And so if you were someone who was new to the game or you just want a competitive gun, then I would stray away from it. Uh, but that is about it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think about the CBJ. Do you agree with me? Have you tried it out? Am I completely crazy and you think it's the best weapon in the game? don't think that's going to be the case, but let me know down below in the comment section. But until tomorrow, guys, have a good one and take it easy.